what I'm going to do today is really to uh, introduce the general idea of reactor transfer equation and the overview of it. Uh, this equation that I put here is what we call mass conservation equation for chemical species in aqueous phase for one of the representative species. I, I don't expect you to know every term that I'm like details of every term in, in this equation because we will be talking more about this each term later. But this is really to give you an, a general idea and overview before we start about everything. And the importance of this is that um, we, we run this reactor transfer code um, and there are a lot of build up architecture behind the coding term of what they solve. And it's always a good idea to know some of these, like what they solve and uh, what are the things behind these codes. So uh, what I will do today is really talking through each of these terms and talking about the physical meaning of each of term so that you, you get a general idea what are they really for. So the first term is um, we call mass conservation term. It's, ma it's called mass accumulation rate. And it should have the units of more per um, length cube, which is volume, of porous media. per time, whatever time you pick. But this, all the term has to be consistent, have the same length and the time units. So the, this equation is, it really says, OK, mass, accu mass accumulation rate depends on several different processes. right? So the, the first term is the, the, the rate itself, and then overall rate. The second term, what we call um, dispersion dispersive and diffusive transport. So you think about how a chemical species in water, um, how they change over time, which is this. So some of these rate coming from for example, the chemical species go to get, uh, like, there's different concentration in different locations. For example, you think about a dye putting a cup of water, and they tend to, over time, they tend to have the same color everywhere. So this is one of the driving force in terms of what we call it, just di diffusive or di uh, dispersive um, transport. And they should have same unit as the first term. Every term has the same units. So that's the second term. And then the third term is uh, we call advective. Transport. And this is a process where, for example, you think about rivers, right? Um, and uh, the chemical species will flow together with the water. And so essentially, the water brings the chemical species to different places. So this, uh, the vacuum transport in this, um, in this term, you have the U, which is we call Darcy velocity. And then the concentration, actually, I probably should like I have explained here. The CI will be the concentration of one chemical species of species I, a representative species I. And the CI everywhere is the same. So this is uh, this is a, a divective transport. But also in in um, a lot of uh, system you have reactions, right? So the last term four is for the f total reaction rates, and again overall it has same units as as the first term. But essentially this could be a summation of several different. Let's, let's call this is equal to summation of, uh I, which is for the chemical species I, but this I could involved in, let's say, IK different number of 
chemicals uh, of reactions. So you essentially you'll be adding all the reactions that this chemical species I is participating in, and this I K would be the total number of reactions. For I. Okay, so so this is one represented equation. We we um we write this equation form for the species I. But if you have let's I put the I from one to n here, meaning you can have any arbitrary number of we call a uh, uh, a primary species. So if you have let's say ten different chemical species, then the the primary species you have n equal to ten, and you'll be writing ten of these equations. And this, these equations are essentially solved. If we solve this equation, you get the concentration of different chemical species as a function of time and space. So essentially, it's the outcome of this is um, the temporal and uh, spatial distribution of chemical species. So essentially, you can tracing after each chemical species and look at how they change as a function of time and space, and how in different parts they have different rates and all that. Which is i and i from one to n. Okay, so that's what you will, you guys will be um, exposed to in using this code. You will be. Solving this equation for particular specific questions, uh, problem applications, and then you usually given a set of initial condition like where the concentration of the different species at time zero, uh, at different locations, and then over time how these concentration of different species evolve over time, and you will see you learn a lot about in these doing using this code, and we'll be talking more about this in each of these terms. What are they um, over time in different lessons will follow.